Hello everybody and welcome back to the long-awaited head swap tutorial. I won't waste any time and simply get into the gist of it. The blender version I'm using today is Blender 3.4 and the model I have here today is by Food Baby. I will link everyone's dis uh, avatar links and stuff in the description below. Everything that I'm using from the head by duck will also be linked down below. This tutorial is going to be how to head swap an avatar from a head that is just a mesh, meaning that this head is not attached to any pre-existing body. A, another tutorial will be coming out for that, but this is just from a head you bought to an avatar you bought. So let's get into it. First things first, if you haven't watched how to export an FBX from Unity and how to import an FBX into Blender, I recommend you go watch those two videos before you come to this one because remember, knowing your basics is super important. If you do not have Cat's plugin already installed into your Blender, please go do that. There are many, many helpful tutorials on how to do that. I do not feel the need to make one like that. So please just quickly install Cat's plugin as this is what we'll be using to head swap. And Disclaimer, I am fully aware that there are other ways to do this and there are more efficient ways to do this and there are a billion ways to do this as creators are unique, are creative, are amazing. This is in no way, shape, or form trying to say that I know the best way to do this. This is simply the way that I do it and it has not failed for me. So I would love to teach you guys as this is also my creation journey with you. Now the first thing we have here is our model. At this point, you should have the model that you want to head swap imported within your Blender project. The next thing to do is to press N on your keyboard and come down to the Cats tab and then come right up to Import. From here, we are going to import the head that we are going to be using. So for me, I'm just going to import Duck's head quickly. For now, we can simply ignore this head and come to the right hand side to the armature, hide that with the little eyeball at the far right hand side, and then come from the drop down menu right here to the body and come to the right hand side again and hide that. We just want that in our project. I then collapse this and then drop down our avatars hierarchy menu. So from here, we have a couple of things, a lot of things that we currently don't need shown to head swap until later. So so what I like to do is I like to come to the little eyeball and hide everything that I don't necessarily need to see right now. So I'm going to keep the shirt on because it's YouTube and we're just going to come and we're going to take all of these meshes off specifically just so we can get down to what we need. If your head and your body are on separate meshes, then please keep both of those on as you are going to need those on. So. How do you know if something is on a separate mesh? If I go to click on the face, oh, I'm gonna scroll all the way up and actually hide the armature too, because we don't need that right now. If I go to click on the face, I can see that this orange highlight is the one singular object that I am going to be editing, meaning that my face is also connected to the body, which is also connected to this front portion of the hair. If I click on the shirt, I can see only the shirt is highlighted in orange, and that means that that shirt is its own separate object. Now, if you click on the face, and your face has a similar effect to the shirt, where it is literally its own object, all I'm going to ask you to do is press on the face until it is highlighted in orange, and then press the delete key on your keyboard, and you can fast forward through this and completely ignore the rest of this. If you are in a situation like me, where the hair and the body and everything is joined together, I'm not going to ask you to unjoin those meshes, meshes as I feel it just creates more work and I don't feel I get as precise of a result as I want. So let's say this is the scenario. I like to be precise with my work and I like to see if I can keep things like piercings, things like earrings, things like glasses, or things that might be attached to the face, so I like to keep those things. So I'm going to press on so everything that I want to edit is highlighted. And then on my keyboard, I'm going to press the tab key. That is going to set us in edit mode and that's going to allow us to edit all of these polygons, vertices, and triangles on an individual basis. I am then going to right click off the avatar onto the background just so everything isn't highlighted and I can start working on things individually. Now this is the little pattern that we're gonna learn is hovering your mouse above something you want but not clicking. 
So this blush mesh, where the blush texture would be applied to, I don't need that anymore and I don't want it on the new head. So I'm going to hover my mouse above this blush and I'm going to press L on my keyboard. That is going to allow me to deconstruct and select this one individual piece. So this thing itself is actually a piece. Just as this head is a piece, these lashes are a piece, those eyebrows are a piece, that's what allows me to single out things like piercings. If, for example, here's a piercing here, if I press L, that entire circle gets highlighted. So from here, I'm going to press L and highlight everything I do not want. So from what I can see right now, and what I can see for face value, these little things, I do not need these because I'm replacing the entire head. I know there are better ways to do this, but again, this is the way I do it. Once I've had a decent chunk of things that I can see highlighted and ready to delete, I'm going to press the delete key, not the backspace key, the delete key on my keyboard, and then press vertices. From there, I can now see there was more things in the head I don't need, so I'm going to go again with that hovering the mouse and pressing L on my keyboard until I've highlighted absolutely everything I want deleted press the delete key, and boom. Here I'm left with a headless avatar that is ready to put my new head in. So from here, I'm not going to show anything. I'm going to come back down into the hierarchy and find where I left the armature and the selection for my head. I'm going to turn on armature, and I am going to turn on the actual face itself. So it should look something like this. Remember, to, if you guys are still stuck in edit mode, press tab. Tab to enter, tab to exit. But now we should be here. This is where we're left with the head and the armature shown. This is very important that you have the armature shown because if you only have the head shown and you start moving things here, and I turn on the armature again for the head, as you can see, the head and the armature are completely detached. So make sure you turn on both of those things so that they are attached to each other. And when you're moving something, we have a bunch of hotkeys I'm going to teach you, but you're holding on to the armature. So press on the armature button or the mesh button, basically this little orange button, probably name something different for everybody, but this is the button I'm talking about right here. It'll be highlighted in orange. It'll be the first thing you see before you drop down. From here, I'm going to teach you how to move things on an axis. How to move an object in general is G. Now you can see where that would be a problem with adjusting things on a free plane axis, meaning I can move this wherever I want, meaning that things become asymmetrical, things aren't exactly lined up, and we have to rely on our eyes to tell us where things belong. But we can also move on straight axes. So if I do G, so now we're moving, so if I press G and then press Y directly after, I can move forward and back. If I press G and then I press Z, I can move up and down. And if I press G and then I press X, I can move side to side. Now you can see here, we've got the Y axis and we've got the X axis and we've got the G axis. I mean, the Z axis. So from here, I'm going to slowly adjust my head approximately to where I need it. We're not scaling anything yet. We're just adjusting it approximately. So here's where I think my head approximately should be. But when I look at the proportions of everything, it is clearly too big, or maybe for you, it is too small. Now we're going to work on scaling. So press G and then press S. Pulling up will increase the scale and pulling down will decrease the scale. Because the head was too big, I'm going to decrease the scale and then work on my axes, G, Z, and X to move the head accordingly. Scale it up a bit. Now this is just for the sake of video, I'm not going to make this perfect. But here we go. Now if I'm looking around the entire avatar all together, I can make adjustments accordingly and make sure it's still pretty close to what at least a somewhat normal anatomy would be. Now that is the reason I kind of take the time to like look all around because if I'm going from the side it looks great at front like it's like oh it looks so good at front and then I look from the side and she's way too far forward. So once you have the head placement where you want it to be this is going to return to why I turned everything off. Not only to make it less overwhelming and more ideal like 
chaos wise to adjust the head now i can make adjustments with assets i can apply this exact same thing to all of these individual pieces right here so if i take this hair bow right i'm going to click on it in the hierarchy and i can do gy oops gy i can move it around just like i did the head and that's important if your head isn't exactly the same shape or size or forehead size as the original head that means that you can move things accordingly so you can help it fit the head meaning that if the head doesn't necessarily work with some of the assets you're not like doomed with clipping you can actually sit here and move the assets accordingly, whether or not it's by scale or by moving it up and down to adjust accordingly. So remember, I always go through the head assets one by one. So for this bubble gum, I feel like it's a little too far down. I press G, I go up a little bit, and boom. I can go up and now the bubble gum is more fitted to the head. Once you have adjusted all of your assets and everything, go and turn everything back on from the armature. So all of these little eyeballs should now be open. They should not be blinking. We're going to go all the way down. Take your time with it again. Take your time to take a look at things. But for the sake of the video, I will be Speedy Gonzalez about this. So now we're here. We are at this state where the head is placed where we want it to place and everything is adjusted accordingly. At this point, the head and the other assets are not attached to each other, meaning that this head is moving on its own individual state and so is everything else. So from here, this is where I use Cat's plugin. I'm going to come to custom model creation and I'm going to make sure it's on merge armatures. From here, I'm going to unclick join meshes. This is a completely this up to you, like you do not have to do this. But for me, I like my head and my body being on two separate meshes just because I'm used to working with Booth and Western models. It just helps a lot so things don't fuck up on my end. But if you would like the body and the head to be on the same mesh, meaning that they're connected like we saw earlier, then click join meshes. I also uncheck remove zero weight bones i like to call these the nothing bones meaning bones that don't necessarily do anything but still exist again i like to be precise with my work and i like to know exactly what is going in and what is going out meaning that if i press this i want to make sure that i know what's happening and when i do i don't always know so if i need to remove bones i prefer to do that myself and go in manually so once i've done all of that i press merge armatures this one here is our head armature, as we can see, armature 001, and then the regular armature is just the armature of the regular model. So the head is attaching to the armature. For me, the base is always the model. So meaning, let's say the head was here, switch that around to make sure the base model is always the first. I always make the head second. Does this necessarily affect anything? It's affected things for me, so let's just assume that this is the way it should be done with my specific method. From here, we're pressing Merge Armatures. Now what this is doing is attaching bones, so the head bone is attaching to the old head bone from the original model. It is combining those armatures together to be one, meaning that it's going to overwrite each other, meaning that this armature down here is overwriting this one, and they are going to move seamlessly and simultaneously. I think this is a very cool method, and I think the script is really good at doing that, but again, it's just merging the bones. This could also take a second because some of our PCs aren't NASA computers. But after this process is done, I like to check before exporting to make sure everything worked. Coming into start pose mode, I'm going to search for the head, which can take a couple of clicks. It'll normally be in like the middle of all of this, just all of this mess. It'll be in the middle. When I find it, I move it on the axes, I move the axes around, and I can see underneath to see if there's any holes or clipping, and to see that the head is moving with everything else, and everything else is moving with the head.
I'm going to make a separate video if this doesn't work because sometimes these situations don't work due to the head being named different things and there's a completely separate way on how you attach those but I will go over troubleshooting and I will go over different methods from exchanging avatar head from avatar head and not just the head itself but two models head swapping them both i'm going to go into all of this but this is just the basic head swap tutorial and i really really do help this helps some people because i do know this is one of my most requested video and i finally got to it so thank you all for staying this long and i hope to see your creation soon